it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, July 28th to Saturday, August 3rd. Okay, so last week was a little bit bumpy, a little bit turbulent. Of course, what kicked that off was that full moon in Capricorn energy. That, of course, was the second in back-to-back full moons. That was on the 21st. That was the last day of Cancer season. We moved into Leo season on the 22nd and, of course, had a little bit of an adjustment to that particular energy that I still don't think we're actually in alignment with, if I'm being quite honest. We'll talk about that in just a second. That Leo season energy, again, is just, it's a fixed fire sign. So there is a stabilizing energy. However, that stabilizing energy is feeling more like a pause, more like we are stuck in one spot, like we haven't been able to move on. We haven't been able to move forward. I would suspect that we're going to have to wait until we get to that new moon in Leo before we're going to be catapulted into some futuristic paths and directions. We're still very much in the purging phase, in the closing out phase, and we'll talk about that in just a second as well. We had Mercury move into his rulership in Virgo energy here on the 25th. And as I'm coming to you here Friday evening on the 26th, we just had Chiron, the wounded healer, go retrograde. And of course, we have one last event that is still yet to pop off as I'm coming to you here Friday evening, which is the last quarter moon popping off in Taurus energy. And that is going to be late on the 27th. So still this building of intensity, that last quarter moon is a realization point. It's a revelation point. It's when we get to look back, back to the essentially new moon in Cancer, we got to see that full moon in Capricorn at a one degree at the beginning of Cancer season. We have to take a look at the second full moon in Capricorn at the 29th degree that we just had on the 21st. Now we're putting pieces together, mostly with an elimination perspective, meaning now we're starting to process. Now we're starting to sort out what is working for us. What isn't who and what needs to stay needs to go again. We are in a holding pattern. Let's call it a pause pattern in order for us to take a lay of the land. We have an inventory that we have to kind of, you know, complete before we can move on, start making advances towards this new chapter, this new path, this new direction. So what do we got going on this week, you may ask? Well, it's a relatively quiet week, if I do say so myself, although that always tends to kind of burn me in the long run because nothing is quiet these days. We have just completed a very important karmic chapter. We are essentially in a brand new galactic year. Again, talk about that in a second as well. And therefore this week, we're just getting our bearings. We are going to wrap up, bring a finality to these endings, to these closures of these particular chapters before we start building towards something new. We will be moving out of July's energy, which of course carried the vibration of seven. It did give us a little bit of a chance to find a different balance point, a different grounding point. It did help us build upon the relationship within ourselves, really understand why the ever changing landscape of our external relationships are up and down and back and forth and everything in between. We're moving into August. August carries the vibration of eight. We're in the year of eight. So there's going to be a major change, a major transformation, especially where our heart space is concerned, because of course we're in Leo season, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We will be building towards the new moon in Leo. That is going to be taking place on the fourth. On the fourth, we also have Venus moving into Virgo energy. So this is going to be the last full week that Venus is going to be in the heart and soul of the Zodiac here in this Leo energy as well. And although Mercury is already in his pre-retrograde shadow period, slowing down each and every single day in order for us to trust our intuition over our intellect, we will kind of complete Mercury's last week fully direct. We will see Mercury go retrograde on the 5th in his rulership here in this Virgo energy. So we don't have very many major things happening this week, but what I will say is that we have three moon days coming at us, which is very odd. Um, It's starting off on Sunday, on the 28th. We have our first moon day. There's only four aspects taking place that day, which is bizarre. 
like absolutely absurd. Four, that's like minimal energy. And to have the moon, again, pop off late on the 27th with that last quarter moon at five degrees in Taurus and then carry us into Sunday where the moon is gonna be in Taurus but only have four aspects like that is just bizarre to me so i would suspect that that is going to be a very i'm going to say calm peaceful day but there's going to be a huge influence on our inner realms like we're all going to be so introverted we are going to be focused on trying to stay present in the here and now but I just suspect just with some of the energies popping off on Sunday there that we're going to have some aha moments, some epiphanies that's going to change the emotional landscape, change the emotional game, if you will, on what we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to do, what we want to pursue from here. Now, on Monday, we're also going to have another moon day, but the moon is going to be moving out of the Taurus energy and moving into Gemini energy, which is going to be an interesting dynamic because, of course, the moon has to pop off with Uranus, the Great Awakener, before moving into that Gemini energy, which tells me, again, another set of downloads, another vision, another aha moment, another epiphany, another revelation, realization on what we need to do, what we need to build, what we need to create, what we need to pursue. We shift into that Gemini energy, and of course, that's going to add a certain amount of pressure to the headspace on top of Mercury already being in his rulership and Virgo energy. Mercury rules over that Gemini energy as well. So we're definitely going to be torn, again, furthering the division between the choices, the options, the decisions, the direction, the path that we currently have available to us. Where are we going? Who are we? What are we doing? What do we even want to do? You know, like these, this is the vibe right now. Um, when we move into Monday, again, the moon rules over Monday. So to have a moon day on a Monday just means that we're going to be hella all up in the feels. Definitely processing, emotionally speaking, what needs to stay, what needs to go. Um, we are definitely going to feel that pressure in the heart space. We are in Leo season, mind you heart activations back to back in order for us to figure out where it is that we're moving away from pouring our time, energy and efforts into certain timelines, certain soul contracts, certain projects and where it is that we're going to be pivoting, especially through August being the month of eight in the year of eight major change, major transformation, especially where the heart space is concerned. We are going to have the third moon day on Saturday, August 3rd, which coincidentally enough, if you believe in coincidences, uh, also opens us to the new moon energy. We're going to have the new moon in Leo again on the 4th. And so Saturday having a moon day, this time with eight different aspects, shifting out of the moon being in his rulership in the Cancer energy into the Leo energy, setting us up for that new moon in Leo. That is going to be a major revelation day as well. I do suspect, like, for example, we're moving into uh, the Cancer energy. The moon rules over the Cancer energy. So we're moving into the moon's rulership um, late Wednesday. We are going to continue to be in that rulership energy until Saturday. And that's just going to be a flashback to Cancer season. I'm going to prepare you right now. Nobody had fun in Cancer season. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm speaking for everyone. I don't know one person who said, oh my goodness, cancer season was amazing. I loved it. Even my cancer placements who had their birthday were like, can't wait to get cancer season over with. Um, a lot of that is because of the solstice energy, that reset in karma, that reset in storylines. It was realizing the connection, the attachments that we were having to the old realm, to the old reality and where it is that we were essentially blocking our own progress by holding on to a dead horse, essentially. And so I would suspect that when the moon moves into this cancer energy, this is going to be a reflection back to cancer season. It's going to remind us of the trials and tribulations, if you will, that we went through through cancer season, the pain, the trauma that we had to acknowledge in order to do the inner child healing work and the mother role nurturing healing work as well. But because the sun is in Leo energy, this gives us the boldness, the bravery, the courage that may we may have been lacking through cancer season to actually cut the cord emotionally, mentally, spiritually speaking to a lot of those ideas, to a lot of those wants, needs, and desires. We have done a huge amount of purging, a huge amount of releasing, because that's just the chapter that we're in, 
And I think this is going to be a little bit of a reflection back, an overview, if you will, to what all transpired in cancer season. But we're seeing it from a different set of eyes, from a different lens, because, of course, we've been building ourselves up. We're preparing to move on. But again, I don't feel that we're going to be super focused on the future options and opportunities until we move through that new moon in Leo. So... Um, with all of that being said, yeah, we don't have anything major going on this week. We do have three moon days, which I think is super significant to give us a chance to kind of acclimate to these new energies, acclimate to what has ended, acclimate to what it is that we do want to pursue from here. I would also say that we have some major conjunctions taking place this week, just with the moon moving through Taurus and Gemini energy. You know, we have Uranus in Taurus, so there's that pop off. Once the moon moves into Gemini energy, of course, Mars is there, Jupiter is there. We have we have a lot to kind of reset upon, and that's exactly what conjunctions help us to do. So taking a good look at where it is that we're, we're going to be at at the beginning of the week in Taurus energy and where it is that we're wrapping the week up in Leo energy. And then we move into a very active week, um, that first week of August, if you will. Um, of course, you know, coming at you here not that I'm dipping into my homework li list a little bit too early here, but, uh, I will have those energy and Zodiac forecast for August available over the next coming of days as we move into that brand new month. And of course, that's going to give you the rundown of what we have coming at us in August, but just know that this is essentially the calm before the storm. Meaning I'll give you a little bit of a rundown. August 4th, new moon in Leo, same day, August 4th, Venus moves into Virgo. August 5th, 24 hours later, Mercury retrogrades four degrees in his rulership in Virgo energy. August 8th, that's the Lion's Gate 8 8 portal. Um, we have a lot of alignment, alignments, whether, you know, that Lion's Gate is an actual portal or not, doesn't really matter. We're moving through the Leo constellation, if you will. We're aligning with Sirius, that's our spiritual sun, our spiritual star. We are aligning with Regularis. After that 8-8 portal almost takes us into the 12th, if you will. And that's why from July 26th, as I come to you here Friday evening, to August 12th, we are in what we call the spiritual window of choice points. That Lion's Gate portal, it is an amplified energy because of the alignment with Sirius, which is our spiritual sun. So we're being downloaded with goals, with visions, with dreams, with insight. We do have a choice point upon our hands. That's why the uncertainty of the options of the path of the opportunities, directions that we currently have available to us have been as confusing as F as they have been because we need to get between, technically speaking, the 8th and the 12th before we're going to actually decide now many people are talking about you know consciously ego deciding when realistically speaking it's a trigger and an activation of our higher self our soul self that actually decides and then our ego is a little bit slower to kind of catch on to what it is that we're being called to do being called to pursue um that was a little bit of a mini rant i will i will admit that was a little bit of a mini rant just trying to kind of discuss what it is that we are going to be experiencing over the course of this week let me just take this opportunity to check a couple of things off of my homework list so that i can continue my ranting because i do have a couple of things that i would like to talk about um, but first of all i just want to start by thanking you i want to thank you for being here i want to thank you for liking for sharing for commenting for dropping emojis in the comment section below i thank you so much for your love and support i thank those of you that have been able to support me financially with those beautiful donations just to say hey your work is valuable continue doing it even though youtube doesn't want you to do it it all adds up i thank you so much for kind of making up for what youtube has stolen from me over the last couple of months as far as monetary support goes so thank you so much for that i want to thank those of you that have jumped over to patreon decided to join the community over there show your love and support in a different form in a different place i appreciate it so freaking much like i previously mentioned the Zodiac forecast for August are coming here very shortly for your downloading pleasure. Probably, uh, I would say, the very last day of July because I'm a procrastinator, if I do say so myself. So that particular forecast is coming at you over the next coming of days. I am going to recommend that you download your Leo season e-guide. We have 
a whole kit and caboodle of energy shifts coming at us here once we kind of make this transition into august we're going to be wham bam thank you ma'am back to back energy shifts so you're going to want to stay ahead of the game stay in alignment with those particular energies as well okay that's all i really want to address as far as the quote unquote homework slash business part of it goes I have some things that I want to talk about. Okay, so here on the 26th, technically today is the very first day of a brand new galactic new year, meaning the 25th, yesterday, we just had the day out of time. Basically, the Mayan calendar and that 13-month calendar that the moon is based off of, it has 364 days with one day left over. The 25th, yesterday, that was the day that was left over. That's why everybody and their dog was lazy as F, heavy weighted confused dizzy not feeling so good not feeling so hot very disoriented not knowing if you're coming or going that's because the day was literally a void uh, not to mention the moon being in a huge void does not help any of the uncertainty instability energies that the day out of time generally creates for us now this is something that happens each and every single year around these particular dates because again uh our ancient ancestors they had the right idea we're time we're calendars we're concerned we've just been a little bit fooled by the the new modern day calendar if you will but that's why the 25th was out of whack because we were out of time we were literally just an extra day left over and here on the 26th we kick off the new galactic new year which of course is a new chapter and this is why it happens in the way that it does because we get cancer season over with that is the karmic reset that is the purge that is the cleanse that is the purification stage we move into leo season the heart and soul of the zodiac and until that new moon in leo we're still in the ending we're still in the closure we're still cleaning up the debris the mess of the past so this is why everybody's confused. This is why everybody doesn't know if they're coming or going. This is why, you know, everybody's questioning. Did we jump timelines? Are we jumping timelines? Are we on a choice point? Do we have more choice points? What's going on here? Now, everybody has a totally different perspective, a totally different belief. And that's what makes the world such a great place is that we all have a different lens that we are looking at life through. That is why we're here. We're all here to have an individualized experience because we all come from the same source. And when we all return back to source, we're all going to take our own individual experiences and put it in the melting pot so that we can check off all the experiences that could ever possibly happen on any timeline with any variable on this earth plane. That is what we're here to do. That is why Source has individualized our individual souls to come and walk this earth plane at the time in which we're currently walking it so that we can all have a different perspective, a different view of the exact same experience that we won't even realize that we all had until we go back to that you know, conference room when we return back to Source and we start comparing notes. That is what we are here to do. But everybody is super confused Everybody is kind of looking at life from a different viewpoint. And I personally believe, taking you back to the 13th, when we had that, you know, major event pop off that the whole world is talking about that I still continue to refuse to address with words and with power. Um, I believe that that was the timeline jump. And I believe that for the most part, um, that we changed, we changed the course of the path of the timeline that we were walking at that particular juncture. Now, I'm not commenting good or bad, although I do feel it's a more positive timeline than the one that was supposed to take place on that individualized day. Um, but now we have to clean up the mess, clean up the debris of the storyline that everyone thought that we were going to be walking at this time point, that we're not walking at this time point because we upgraded to a different timeline. This is why everybody's confused. This is why everybody wakes up each and every single day, does the same old thing, but it feels different each and every single time. People questioning who it is that they are, who it is that they were, who it is that they're becoming, who it is that they want to become, what it is that they want to do, what it is that they enjoy. The questions are out there. Take a good look at the Gemini energy that we have Jupiter in specifically at this point. Mars, yes, to a certain extent, but Mars is just looking to take action and make moves on these new ideas. Jupiter is trying to magnify the options and opportunities that we have to grow that we have to make some progress here in life and the gemini energy although has this very divided one day we feel like we're on this plan this timeline this particular path the next day it's something total opposite 
Confusion is the name of the game right now. Confusion opens us up, makes us a little bit more open and vulnerable to doing things in a different way. And that's exactly what we need to be doing at this particular juncture in order for this earth plane to actually move into a positive timeline. I believe that we are essentially moving through this Lionsgate portal, moving through this choice point, moving through this timeline jump that we normally have each and every single year at this particular point in time when we do have an alignment with Sirius and we do have an alignment with Regularis. I do believe that this time around, we have already chosen. We've already decided. You may not feel that in your ego self, but your higher self knows what's up. And as we kind of move through this week, again, this being a quote unquote, the calm before the storm, once we move into, again, new moon in Leo, Venus moving into Virgo, Mercury's retrograde, then the lion's gate per portal, then Mercury slips back into Leo energy, then we have a full moon, then it's Virgo season, then we're in a totally different playing field. Again, we have to use our heart space, Leo energy, to discern what makes us happy, what does not who makes us happy, who does not, what we want to do, what we want to pursue. This is all heart activated. The new version of self has a new vibration, a new frequency that we're operating from. Therefore needs to be fully expressed, fully animated through the physical egoic form that we are using as the avatar to navigate this particular earth plane. And so we're questioning who it is that we are because this new version of self is still relatively new. And although it's not, you know, anchored in fully, and although it doesn't feel familiar it does feel better, although I hesitate to say that because most people are still operating from their ego selves and the ego doesn't feel good right now. That's why most people are very uncomfortable, very out of sorts, if you will, not to mention with all these karmic chapters ending and just the energy and the influence of the time of the season that we're in coming to an end, coming to a close before beginnings can actually even be realized. We're just in a state of adjustment. We're in a state of awkwardness because Again, there's remnants of the old, there's not enough anchored in energies of the new. And so we're back and forth and back and forth and all the Gemini energy and all the retrograde planets are just kind of illuminating. Oh, we'd like to move forward this day, but guess what? Things from our past won't allow us. And now we have to pivot, look back to the past, rectify those particular situations before we can make any kind of advancement into a new path, into a new direction towards a brand new vision, a brand new goal. So the heaviness, the weight that we're feeling in our physical bodies is to make us anchored into the present moment so that we can fairly evaluate. And again, with Mercury now in Virgo energy, dissect and analyze our lives right to shit, if we will, in order to figure out what we're holding on to, what we're not, what is working for us, what isn't what we enjoy to continue to expand upon, what needs a swift kick in the ass and, and to show an exit to the door in, in which case we're going to nail that door shut and that particular aspect of life is never coming back. And so again, we're physically exhausted. Um, again, until the new moon in Leo energy on the fourth, I don't expect us to be feeling that pep in our step, that's when the Leo energy comes out to play. Right now, we are closing out the Cancer energy, trying to initiate in this Leo energy, but the new moon is essentially what anchors that Leo energy in. We're still under the influence of the new moon in Cancer. And until we have the next new moon in Leo, we're going to be under the influence of Cancer energy. That's why we're heavy. That's why we're weighted. That's why there's still remnants of the past that we have to deal with before we can move on. It's all very confusing to the ego avatar. We are very emotional and then we are numb and then we're hella emotional again and then we're numb. And then we're confused and then we have clarity and then we're numb again and then we're confused and then we have clarity and then we're overwhelmed. This is just part of the process in order for us to find our new common ground, our new center point, our new balancing point, our new grounding point. Mentally speaking, because, you know, Mercury's in his rulership in this Virgo energy, but also slipping out of consciousness and moving into the unconscious realm once he goes retrograde. There's a lot of dissection that needs to happen in our mental narrative, in our perspective, in our lens. Again, the Virgo energy is the purifier of the Zodiac, is the healer of the Zodiac, is the fixer, the problem solver of the Zodiac. But we have to be aware of the problematic issues in order for us to figure out what needs to be fixed. We have to determine what requires the most time, energy and attention right now. 
in order for us to resolve issues of the past and clear the space and clean the slate for us to start building towards something new. And so, you know, there's a lot of insecurity kind of creeping up in us right now. Definitely the uncertainty getting to most of us right now. And I want to talk about this for a second. There's a high level of loneliness. Now, loneliness is very interpretive. I don't mean if you're alone that you're necessarily lonely because most alone people by choice are definitely not alone. They enjoy their own company. But there's a detachment going on that is making us feel a little bit more alone, a little bit more isolated than we actually are. And that is just the, let's call it adjustment period of the energetic connections that we are going to have with the people with the world around us. So again, take you back to the beginning of cancer season, that solstice energy triggered and activated a karmic reset. The let's call it ever changing landscape of our relationship dynamics with the people with the world around us are changing. The more we build ourselves up, the more we get to know thyself, the more we identify what makes us happy, what makes us feel safe and secure, the more building we're doing within our own damn selves, which of course requires an adjustment to the energy exchanges that we are going to continue to have with the people with the world around us. But there's a disconnect. We are essentially uh, I'm going to say recalibrating our own vibration, our own frequency. We're getting to know our own heart space, what makes us happy, what makes us feel love, what makes us feel real and raw and authentic. But this is a concentration right now on us as individuals. When you go through your awakening journey, your awakening process, there is an isolation period. God, creator, source, whatever you want to call it, needs you to be on your own time, needs you to be in your own vibe, needs you to be just sitting with yourself to get to know yourself. That whole pandemic that we just went through a couple of years ago there, that was the major thing of that isolation was to, again, pull people out of the, I'm going to call it robotic automatic routines that they found themselves in isolate them to a certain extent in order for them to realize who it is that they are what it is that they've been doing what they actually enjoy what they actually do not enjoy it's part of getting to know thyself because we just anchored in this new version of self and again still very unfamiliar territory here there is this certain, I'm not going to call it an isolation period because you could be around a whole damn group of people right now and still feel like you're alone in the world. This is the isolation period that we're now going through, looking through the lens of this new version of self. And so the loneliness needs to happen. It needs to happen. It needs to be a focus point. It needs to be amplified in order for us to dig that much deeper into what we could be doing for ourselves. So many of us look outside of ourselves for happiness, for joy, for validation, for excitement, for entertainment, when realistically everything that you need is within yourself. And sometimes we need to be in a room with a crowd in order for us to realize that we connect with no one in this room. No one is on the same page. No one understands what I'm talking about. Nobody can meet me where I'm at. And sometimes you need that kind of reality check in order to force you inward and really examine why am I looking to all of these people who I don't even care about, who I don't even know to shed light on what it is that I should be doing with my life. Why am I continuously act asking for other people's thoughts and opinions on the choices that I need to be making for myself? This loneliness energy is here to amplify the kind of connection that we actually want to be making with people because the shallow connection is no longer fulfilling that shallow part of ego self. And so again, we're in Leo season, we're in the heart and soul of the Zodiac, we need to be building up ourselves, we need to be building it within the relationship of ourselves, we have to understand what makes us tick, we have to understand what makes us excited and inspired and passionate about some of the things that we want to do and pursue in the world. And this is a solo quest, a solo adventure. Let me also remind you the North Node, okay, the North Node is in Aries energy, that is independence. What sits across from independence? Codependent. That's the Libra South node that we're trying to break away from. And again, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the nodes, this is the karmic life lesson that the collective is currently learning. This is why the eclipse seasons that we've had, well, the last one in the spring and technically a taste of last fall, we will have another taste of it coming at us this fall. 
The nodes of the moon are still amplifying where it is that we have to break away from being too intertwined, too connected, too attached to other people, especially where their thoughts, their opinions, their ideas are concerned, because we tend to dim our own light in order to be loved and accepted by the people, by the world around us. Many of us have sacrificed big time our own wants, needs, desires, and dreams to make the people that we're currently sharing time, energy, and space with happy, which is absolutely insane. That is a detachment of the relationship with self. When you give other people just as much or even more power than you give yourself to make the decisions, to make the judgment calls in your own life, you are no longer operating in your own interest. You are no longer living in your most authentic self. You have no idea of the power that you are giving away to the people that don't deserve it in the first place. So this underlying loneliness issue that is creeping up in the collective as of late, Again, major, major teacher to us, if you're willing to actually learn at this particular juncture, being a student of life, it's teaching us that we need to be alone in order for us to figure out who it is that we are, what it is that we want to do, what we have to pursue and put into perspective the meaningless, shallow connections and attachments that we in the past, or maybe still in the present, depending on where it is that you're at in your healing journey, where it is that you've entertained such shallow connections. We don't want that anymore. Our soul yearns for deep, intimate connections on a soul level. And we're not able to entertain anything less than that. But of course, you have to get real and raw and vulnerable with yourself in order to keep yourself accountable and responsible for the energy exchange that you are either choosing or not choosing to have with the people with the world around you. So this is just a tough love life lesson in this particular chapter, in this particular juncture of the calendar right now, on where it is that we have to be alone to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves of what makes us happy and what does not in order for us to put into perspective what we have to let go of. This is the purification stage. This is the purging stage. This is the ending and the closure stage that of course we began in cancer season that is still alive and well until we have that new moon in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So of course, with all of those realizations comes heart activations. We're in Leo energy. There has to be heart activations. But again, this is triggering the emotions to let things go until we get to that new moon in Leo, which is going to be a breakdown slash breakthrough of that heart space of passions of desires. That is where we're at. We have to have the heart activations that trigger the sadness, trigger the grief, trigger the frustration in order for us to be bold and brave and courageous enough to make a change, to cut certain chapters off, certain people off, certain topics and themes off so that when we're gifted with the green light, go ahead, we can pivot and start chasing the new wants, needs and desires of the new heart space of the new version of self. So we're still kind of in it. Let's talk about, well, we did kind of talk about the confusion and delusional state that we're in right now. That is necessary at this present time, even though people are just pushing that brain of theirs. Again, Mercury being in this Virgo energy. Come on, let's fix it. Let's solve it. Let's figure it out. Let's come up with a plan. Let's come up with a strategy. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Listen, the more you push your intellect to try and make sense of things, to come up with a rational, logical perspective or understanding or plan or strategy, the more you push your intellect to work, the less you're allowing your intuition to lead. That is why Mercury going retrograde in his rulership in Virgo energy is going to be amazing. I say amazing because I am leaning into the challenge. You, if you are resisting the challenge, may not consider it as amazing, but it's going to be an amazing transit for us to look at life through an intuitional lens versus an intellectual lens. We're also taking our brains with us. There are going to be some downloads that we've already received through other, I'm going to call it energetic situations that we haven't opened up yet. So you know how, you know, on your computer, you can download a file and it's, it's a zip file. Okay, so you got the zip file there, but you haven't gone in to actually open it to actually see all the individual files that were included in this zip file. Right now, we have the zip file on our computer. We just haven't opened it yet. When Mercury goes retrograde, especially in the Virgo energy, 
That is when we are going to open the zip file. That's when we're going to go through the individual files that make up the bigger zip file. And we are going to start putting the pieces together on what needs to go, what needs to grow, what needs to die in order for us to actually pivot and start kind of piecing things together on where we need to move forward from here. Again, a reminder, the Virgo energy that Mercury is currently in is a mutable energy. Mutability means that when given the opportunity to be faced with new information, perspectives, and evidence and proof, we are able to make a, a change. We're able to be flexible enough to pivot away from the path in which we thought we were walking, the belief system that we thought we were believing in, the vision that we thought we were manifesting. If something better is coming along and presents itself, or we're gifted again with information and perspectives that make the vision that we were trying to kind of manifest not as favorable, we're able, we're able to adjust and adapt. That's what we're trying to do with this particular mutability going on. Like take a look at where all the placements are in the chart, like all of the planetary placements, we have a lot of mutable energy. And so times are changing. This is why we're at a pivot point. Lucky for us, the sun is in Leo energy, giving us that fixed energy to not, I'm going to say spontaneously pivot. Fixed energy means that we're here to stand in one spot. We're here to stabilize. And right now we're stabilizing in our heart space and allowing our heart space to kind of take the lead here. But things are going to get very interesting uh, that first full week of August. And I would suspect that we are going to see a lot of moving parts kind of happen at one time that overlap the old that overlap the present that overlap the future and really put us in a different perspective again to see things through a different lens on where it is that guess what that big idea that we were very excited about just a couple of weeks ago that has no meaning to me anymore you know and this is why again everybody right now is so concentrated on rushing through the process of, of reaching a decision just to get to the next process of planning, just to get to the next process of taking action on said plan, you all are doing yourself a disservice. Just be, just observe the comings and goings. It is not time to decide yet. If you decide, if you commit, I guarantee you, you're going to be, again, unraveling those commitments, backtracking on those obligations, second guessing those decisions, and actually, you're going to be creating more of a mess of yourself for yourself to get out of in the weeks to come than if you were just to be patient at this particular juncture, relax, stop rushing through the process of the universe showing you the path, the plan, the strategy that you need to be walking towards. Let the universe show you. Stop pressurizing your mental plane to come up with a plan. This is not intellectually based. This is spiritually based. This is intuitively based. This is not time for you to have the answers. Lean into the confusion. I welcome you to invite confusion into your heart, into your headspace, to sit with it, to love it, to accept it. You thinking that you need to know the plan, you thinking you need to know the end goal, that is your ego. Step out of it. Just be in yourself act as the observer piece things together without trying to make a plan just observe without casting judgment try not to intellectualize the magic of the cosmos the magic of the universe okay so that was my little tough love life lesson rant there the monotony of waking up every day doing the same old same old thing that absolutely needs to happen. Now, I know you're done with it. I know you're like, oh my goodness, please just give me something different in the run of the day. You need the monotony to break you down. Why? Because we are in the year of eight. This is about whether or not you actually have the power within yourself to have the creator abilities to actually be able to create the realm, the reality that you're going to be living in. If you are not practiced in your abilities, if you are not mastering certain abilities, especially to have the power over your emotions and your headspace, if you're not doing all of those things, you will not be the creator of your own realm and reality. Somebody else will. We need the monotony. We, we, we need the repetitious day to day to absolutely break you so that you can dream a bigger dream past the current dream that once was your dream. Oh, let's do a side note of that. Take a good look around. At one particular point in your life, 
you prayed for this. You prayed for it. In some sort of circumstance, you prayed for the things that you currently do not want anymore, okay? Yes, this is growth. Yes, this is evolution. Yes, this is how things go. But I think it's important that we all pause because we are being forced into a pause right now and look back, reflect upon where it is that you were in your past, where old versions of self literally would have killed in order to have your present day circumstances, Okay, that's why you need to have the attitude of gratitude. That's why you need to have faith. That's why you need to have trust. Why? Because at one point in time, you did not think that you were ever going to be living in the circumstances that you're currently living in because the old version of self was so far be behind, let's call it behind, on where it is that you're at now that you couldn't even have fathomed ever having the experience that you're currently experiencing. So now we're here in a goal and a vision, a dream that our old self once had. And now we're discontent. Now we want something different. That's okay. That doesn't mean that we're not, you know, appreciative of how far we come and where it is that we're at and what it is that we have. It just means that, you know what, this particular chapter has run its course and now it's time to grow up. Now it's time to evolve. Now it's time to move on. Let's do that. So this is why you have to have trust and faith in the process, because at one point in time, you, you didn't think you were going to be where it is that you're currently at, but looking at that, you are. So that means that you can do it again. This means that again, you just have to be reassured, trust yourself, trust the universe, trust the greater, grander plan with such loyalty, with such inspiration, with such excitement, with such passion that you're okay to live in this state of awkwardness. You're okay to live in the state of confusion. You're okay to live in Delulu land right now. You have to be okay with it. The constant needing to know, the constant having a plan, the constant, you know, conjuring up the goal, the vision, the dream, the goal, the target, that is your ego self trying to have control over things that you know that you'd have zero control over. It's a false program in the ego avatar. Pay it no mind. Every single time that you feel your mental plane trying to push for a solution, trying to push for a logical, practical, let's call it, you know, aha moment, let's say. That's when you take a deep breath and you say, okay, mental plane, okay, intellect, I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to let my intuition, my higher self lead. And that is when you come to a state of observation. Anywho, back to the repetitious monotony of the same old, same old. You have to be absolutely to your wits end where you cannot do the same day again ever again before you're willing to open up be raw real and vulnerable with what it is that you could do different it's just how humans learn it is just how humans learn they want to say that we're the most intelligent species which i think is an absolute insult to all of the other intelligent species out there because humans aren't it i don't know take a good look around we ain't it um we think we're smart we're not smart at all okay the more we think the less we actually know, okay? You have to be able to balance your intellect and your intuition. And Mercury's upcoming retrograde is going to give us a harsh reality check on how to do just that. I wanna talk about the head pressure. Again, with Mercury in this Virgo energy, there is a lot of head pressure. There's a lot of clicking, buzzing in the ears. Again, that is download, that is like indicator that you're, you're, you're burning your brain out. OK, you need to slow that down. You need to press pause on the whole like brain pattern thing. You need to check out a little bit. Again, closer we get to that Mercury retrograde, you're not going to have a choice. So it would be nice to kind of, you know, tap into your abilities, if you will, and kind of show a little bit of control and restraint at the same time over your ability to shut the intellect down and move into intuitional observational mode. The headspace going to have this moving headache going to feel like there is Rice Krispies or um, what are those things called? Did you put them in your mouth? Pop rocks. Going to feel like there's pop rocks exploding in your head at times. That is the, I'm going to call it, dissolution of the old neural pathways and the refiring and rewiring of the new neural pathways. So basically, we're cutting through the neural pathways that have a fixed perspective, a fixed limiting perspective, if you will critical judgment, critical eye from the intellect. And we're opening up new neural pathways that tell us that it's okay not to know. It's okay to be confused. It's okay to not have the answers. It's okay to not have the goal. It's okay to not have the vision. We have to find peace 
in the fact that we do not know. And when we think that we do know, that is just us convincing ourselves that we are smart and that we know something when realistically it's a desperate plea for our ego selves to have any kind of control over anything when realistically our higher selves know that we do not. This is just a mind F. Life in its entirety is a psychological operation, okay? So you hear people say, oh, you know, that topic and theme on the news that I'm choosing not to talk about, that is a psyop, and this is a psyop, and this is a psyop. Guess what? Life is a psyop. Get used to it. But that, you know, the physical sensations in the head, those are just going to be good indicators that we're changing the lens. You know, when you go to the eye doctor and they, they flip the lens and they go, is it better this way or that way? And then you say this way or that way. And then they flip something else. They go, is your vision better in this way or that way? In order to find the sweet spot of where your clarity in your vision is the best. This is what we're doing right now through the options and opportunities that we currently have weighing against each other. Again, weighing against each other. What does that sound like? It sounds like Gemini energy. What do we got going on in Gemini energy? We have Mars and Jupiter. Okay. So again, mutable energy. We're flexible. We're, and we're adapting. We're, we're going with the flow here until we're not. And then we need to convince ourselves to get back into the flow. Flow is higher self. We need to be in higher self. We need to be in our intuition. We need to be in our heart space. We need to go with the flow. With that being said, there's a lot of dryness. We are in a fire season. We've been standing still in a fire. I want to give you this analogy. You know, when you're out and you're, you're working out under the sun and it's hotter than hell out there and you can feel the sun literally doing its job too well and, and frying your, your blood from the inside out, you know, when you're just in that direct sunlight and you're just, you can feel yourself melting. Okay, so the smart human behavior would be, hey, let's get out of the sun so that I don't burn to death, okay? What we're doing energetically right now is we're standing in the sun and we're looking at the sun and we're saying, oh my God, this is burning my skin. Oh my God, I can feel my eyeballs boiling. Oh my God, my brain is boiling too. Oh my God, my blood is boiling. And we're just standing there. We're letting it happen. We haven't activated the part of common sense to get the hell out of the sun yet. That's okay. Um, but where I'm going with this is that we've gotten too much sun. So we're feeling a little bit hot. We're, we're hot blooded at the moment. We're feeling dry as F. Okay. Our, our crown, our head, our scalp dry as F. Now you may have oily hair, but I'm going to double down and say, you're going to experience a little bit of dandruff here shortly. Why? Because our crown is getting, uh, burnt out. Okay. Again, active intellect burnout. Mental plane, burnout, emotional burnout, spiritual burnout, physical burnout, keyword here, burn. Our eyes are burning. Our skin is burning. Our lips are dry. Our hands are dry. Our scalp is dry. Our skin is dry. Everything is dry. We were so freaking excited to move into this fire energy when we were just, you know, waiting the emotional ocean of that cancer season, just oversaturated with emotion. And now we get all this fire. And what happens? We go from one extreme to the next. What is the next? The next is we're standing under the sun, literally on fire and everything is drying out. Everything is drying up. We are going through a dry patch. I want you to take that dry patch analogy and take a good look at your life. What are you in a dry patch about? Are you in a dry patch of emotion? Are you in a dry patch of creativity? Are you in a sexual dry patch? There is some sort of dry patch area going on in your life right now. Examine it. Analyze it. What can you learn from it? How can you fix it? Because I don't know, the very first solution if you're standing under the sun and the sun is absolutely scorching you is to get the hell out of the sun, right? But again, we're not there yet. So I'm going to invite you to take a good look at your own life, examine where you've been standing in the sun, where everything's getting dried out and come up with a solution on where it is that you could absolutely change and flip the script on this particular dry part of your life, of the area of your life that you're seeing this stagnancy in. Okay, I want to talk about hunger for a second. So we've been going through this hunger thing. Hungry is all hell, putting whatever you can in your body, then feeling absolutely nauseous and gross about it, or you're on the other spectrum, can't eat at all, just kind of nitpicking little snacky snacks throughout the day, just to keep you going type of thing, still kind of nauseous, you know, whatever the case may be. The hunger pattern, the hunger program is about to change in a big way. I want you to think we're in Leo season. Leo is represented by the lion. The lion was in hibernation. He's coming out of his cave. He's ready to give a big roar. 
And when that roar happens, he realizes, damn, I'm hungry. Okay. He is about to go out and not that I promote, you know, violence in any way, especially where, you know, the whole life cycle of the jungle is concerned, but he's about to go out and catch himself a whole freaking antelope. And he's going to sit down in one setting and he's going to eat that antelope from head to toe. Okay. We are packing on the weight. We're packing in the food. We need nourishment. We didn't learn anything through cancer season. We learned where we need nourishment. The Leo energy is here to return us to the heart, to the soul, to our true authentic space to figure out what it is that we've been lacking, nourishment speaking. We're about to make up for it in a big, big way. That is going to reverberate energetically through the physical body as hunger pains, hunger craving. We could literally eat a horse and we just might, although I do not promote eating horses. Okay, don't come at me. Don't, don't get PETA involved. Okay. They're just sayings. I'm being a little bit sarcastic, but to those of you that understand my sarcasm, I thank you to those of you that still listen to me daily, weekly, or however, however frequently you listen to me and still don't understand my sarcasm. I invite you just to, you know, open up your heart, open up your head and realize that I, I am very sarcastic. Um, I feel like most of the time I have to make these silly disclaimers because it would absolutely blow your mind how many people will show up in my inbox or comment underneath a video and tell me how horrible I am for telling people to go out and kill horses. Okay. I shit you not the, the humanity. No, we are not the most intelligent of species. And let me tell you, I have a whole handful of the most unintelligent of the human species all up in my inbox at times. So that's why I say what I say. Anyways, the hunger, hunger's coming back, roaring like a lion. We are about to fulfill ourselves in a very, very serious way. Um, I wanna talk about the disruption of the digestive system because we're about to have some air issues this week. Air, okay, so. Maybe we have bubble guts. I don't think it's bubble guts though. I think it's like, you know, when you get a burp stuck halfway and it literally like is stuck in your throat and it hurts so bad and you're like trying to induce this burp, this gas bubble to get out of you and you're just making it worse, that kind of thing. You're gonna be choking on your words, choking on air, choking on spit. There is a throat activation taking place here. Why? Well, when we talk about throat activations, typically speaking, we think about communication. When we talk about communication, we talk about Mercury. Mercury is in Virgo energy in his rulership. And we only really speak on things that need to be spoken about in Virgo energy. And especially when it comes to like critical things or, uh, you know, detailed things, there's not a whole lot of emotion there. But we have a lot of emotion in our heart space because, of course, we're in Leo season. Uh, Venus is in Leo. And so we do have a lot of emotion, but Mercury and Virgo energy doesn't like to speak on emotion. We're only talking about matter of facts. And so there's a little bit of an issue going on in our throat chakra this week. Um, air related. There's not a whole lot of air in the cosmos. Haven't, I don't know if you've been taking a little bit of a notice, a little bit of a check to the energy, elemental energy profiles on each of the daily energy forecasts, but we're not very high up in the air energy. And so that air is going to be problematic. And so we're going to see issues where air is concerned and in the physical body, which we're talking about with these ascension symptoms, uh, air up underneath the rib cage, air stuck in your throat, choking on air, choking on words, choking on spit. I feel like this would be a great week to put your hands on something, meaning Test out your creator abilities. What does creator ability mean? It means your ability to bring things into form. So let's say that you have a beautiful idea, maybe an idea for your garden. Maybe you want to build something. Maybe it's a piece of art. Why don't, instead of you sitting around thinking about doing it, why don't you actually invite yourself to do it? Get those hand chakras open. Get that energy flowing through your hands. Put physical hands on physical things. Create something out of your mind. Okay, people think creator abilities. Ooh, I'm going to be able to, you know, uh, stick up my hand and, 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 you know, wave my hand and have all the trees bend. Okay, well, that's very mystical, very supernatural of you, maybe. 
uh, in another incarnation, that is going to be something. Our energy here on the earth plane doesn't support those types of abilities. Um, the type of creator ability that I'm talking about is your ability to have a goal, a vision, a dream in your mind space, in your heart space, take action upon it, use your physical body, use your hands to actually bring something into the world, bring something into form. Get out there in your garden beds, get your hands in clay, pick up a pencil, maybe write, get yourself in the kitchen, make a cake. All of that is creator energy. You have to start using your creator energy. For all of those of you out there that like to do everything on your iPad or computers, keep everything digital, you've lost the power of creation. Pick up a pencil, put that pencil, okay? A wood, wooden pencil with lead in it is an organic substance. Put it to a piece of paper, another organic substance, and watch the vision, watch your words, watch your dreams come out of your head, out of your heart space, through the physical form, and watch it come to life on paper, okay? Like, please, you have to understand, you have to work your creator energies. Your creator energies are your ability to bring something intangible, such as a vision, a goal, a dream, an idea, into the tangible form, physical form, real life creation. It's time for us to do more and more of that. We are in Leo season, so, you know, whatever you're passionate about, especially creative projects, they are going to go beautifully. They're going to go amazingly. You got to actually do it, though. Um, okay, where are vision? Now, I talked about vision last week, and thank you all for reaching out and uh, kind of, you know, giving me a little bit of love of sharing how I went temporarily blind due to the visual aspects of the ascension symptoms. Um, you're going to see more floaters, more orbs, more shiny things in the corner of your eyes, if you will. Our vision is changing. The timeline has changed. The energy has changed. The version of self has changed. The objective has changed. The mission has changed. And so all of these like really weird experiences in our visual field is an indicator that our physical body is adapting to the vibration and frequency needed in order for the changes to actually manifest here in the physical realm. So vision, your physical vision is changing because the vision of the future is changing because the timelines have changed because the karmic chapters have changed. It's all connected. It's all working together. It's a domino effect. We are going to start seeing those visual changes. I want to talk about dream changes for a second. Y'all notice that you're dreaming of people that you haven't even met. Okay, so I'm, I'm deep into dream work. I, I did a whole thesis on dream work for my, uh, for my master's and for my doctorate. I used to use dream interpretation in order to do trauma work. So I'm very high up on the dreams. I understand what happens in the brain. I understand what dreams are. And it is a very interesting thing to know that our subconscious selves takes little fragments of little glimmers, little visions, little experiences through the run of our day that we pay no attention to and formulates a projected vision, a projected, let's call it uh, dreamscape in order for us to experience and bringing attention to detail to some of the things that we totally missed in our waking lives. But how are we going to have dreams of things that we've never visually laid eyes on? You're going to start seeing people appear in your dreams that you have never met that are so unfamiliar to you. Like you're literally going to wake up and you're going to be like, how can I feel so close knit? How can I crave? How can I miss a person in my dreams that I have never met in real life? How is that even a thing? This is our higher selves way of introducing us to soul family members that will eventually enter into our realm. Now, secondary to that, they may not manifest in the physical realm. They may be become part of your astral team, meaning we have a changing of the guard of our, of our spirit guides, of our mentors, of our teachers, of our guardians at particular points of our evolution, especially when our soul growth takes us into a new version of self, meaning you are being exposed to new dream content, especially where people are concerned, because those people are going to be an intricate placement to your future self, to your future soul self, to your future physical self. We don't know how 
they're going to be a part of our lives as of yet, but we're being introduced to them so that when they do kind of cross our paths, either in the physical war world or in the astral realms, that we're going to have a comfort level, a trust level, a familiarity level with them already so that we are not going to waste time second guessing and questioning why they're here, what they want from us, whether they're on our team or not. And so your dreamscape is likely going to take a wild turn, especially preparing you for new concepts, new themes, new people, new vision, new goals. Pay attention to that dreamscape. I think sleep has changed as well. I know I've been sleep. I've, I've, I've slept three days. Uh, listen, you want to talk about taking things as a win? I have slept three days in a row for at least six hours at a time straight, uninterrupted wild okay that's bizarre for me i'm gonna take that as a win is it gonna last forever probably not but i'm gonna take it for a win for as long as i am gifted with the ability to sleep for six hours straight that is amazing to me um i feel like the general consensus is that people are sleeping a little bit better they are sleeping a little bit deeper um, if you're not i would take a good look at your chart and see what is being aspected that is keeping you awake because we're in a cleansing, purifying, purging, releasing stage. A lot of that work is being done in the astral realms, which requires us to get into that REM sleep phase, which requires us to be sleeping a little bit longer than we had been sleeping previously. So not to say that it's going to stay like that forever, but we're going to take that as a win. We're going to take it when we can get it. And I just feel like the dream content is going to become super, super valuable in the days to come. So guys, I think that is all the information that I wanted to share with you for this upcoming week. I thank you so much for being here. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for showing up, not only for me, but for yourself. I thank you for continuing to do the work. I thank you for the love and support that you give my way. But I also want you to take a good look in the mirror and give yourself the same kind of energy, the same kind of love, the same kind of encouragement, the same kind of support for your own damn self. I thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a beautiful week. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.